Hi guys, my name is Daniel. I am decided to make a video today because it happens to be the World International Day of Peace and uh, whilst I'm brand new to this YouTube channel, this is my first video, I'm not new to animal welfare and you know the issues of animal cruelty and everything that goes on in this crazy crazy world. Um, I decided to make a video to explain to you guys why I decided to go vegan. Um, before I was a big meat eater, I had cheese, dairy all the time, used to drink pints of milk, used to have the biggest steak you'd see at the restaurant. Um, if I went out with friends to a restaurant, my eyes would go straight to meat on the menu. I'd never ever think of even going to a vegan or a vegetarian restaurant because, you know, I wasn't vegan or vegetarian, so I was about as a heavy meat, to eat, uh, meat eater as you could get. Uh, it's just happened on one day. I was chatting with someone online and they sent me a link. It was a, a social media link and um, we were talking about food and I said, you know, do, do you like steak, do you like meat, all of that. And they replied back and they said, meat is murder. Their reply, it struck a chord with me. It wasn't so big, but I just thought I'm very interested in how people word things and the words that they use when they talk with people. So when they said murder, um, it just made me, made me think a bit more. They could have said, no, don't eat meat or, you know, something like that but the fact that they said meat is murder i'm a curious guy and normally i research information when i get curious about something so i said to them what do you mean and uh, they didn't say much they just said uh, if you're interested watch this and they posted the link so the link happened to be um a famous animal rights activist link it's uh, by a guy called gary he's got a speech on youtube called the best speech you'll ever hear so go on youtube and watch that if you haven't already and in this presentation that he does at, I think it's a school or a college, he talks about pretty much a whole range of animal rights issues, how we utilise animals in today's society, how we don't consider them as individuals, but more so products. And um, he talks about how we use them for food, how we use them for entertainment, science, fashion, culture, all of the kind of different various uses we have for them. Now, I was watching this video and um, I wouldn't consider myself before as an animal lover. Uh, I liked animals, I liked my pets, you know, I, I've always had cats and I've always liked them but I haven't ever considered myself to be a big animal lover. But this video, I don't know, you don't need to be an animal lover to be against animal cruelty. And when I watched some of the, the videos within his presentation, it was a, a bit of a wake-up call. Every time I've gone to a restaurant and I've ordered meat and, you know, steaks being delivered to my plate, um, always enjoyed it. Of course, I always knew it used to be an animal. But I think as a, as a consumer, you, you come across a, a number of barriers. You Firstly, you get indoctrinated by society. They tell you what's normal. They tell you meat's good for you. You need meat. Um, it's very normal. You look around, everyone else is doing it. So it's normalised. And I love the taste of steak. still do. So, you know, that's, that was me back then. But... Um, when I saw the process behind it for the first time on a video, it just brought to life exactly what animals go through to become those neatly wrapped packages in the supermarkets or the food on your plate. And I didn't make the link back then that without realizing it, I was paying for animal cruelty. Because if we don't pay for products of animals like steaks and you know leather belts and jackets and products that are tested on animals, those people don't have the demand to test on products, you know, that contain animals and all, all of that. So I didn't want to contribute to that. But after I finished watching Gary's speech on YouTube, um, there was a little bit of cognitive dissonance. There was a little bit of me that said, no, come on, this can't be true. Um, I thought it was sensationalist. I thought it was biased. Um, yes, I saw one side of the picture. Um, so I guess that is only one side of the picture, but I thought, this can't be right. I watched, uh, I think the presentation was about 30, 45 minutes long. Now, at the end of it, I thought, very well, I've heard his perspective. Let's hear the other side uh, to try and make it a bit more balanced. So I researched why we consume meat and dairy and why we go through all of that. You know, why do we pay into these uh, big industries that, you know, have indoctrinated society? You know, I think like 90, over 95% of 
the society is meat eater and I just thought surely there's got to be a big reason um I went for this phase of ignorance um I call it intelligent ignorance it's when you're open to learning stuff but you just don't know what you're talking about so I researched the web and I thought why do people eat meat and it turned out that the more research that I did the more I realized that there's absolutely no reason at all typically it boils down to uh, ignorance culture um, habits taste uh, all of these reasons for me weren't justification why I should continue paying into uh, causing, directly causing harm to animals. Um, I think it's a little bit easier for consumers to make this choice firstly because everyone else is doing it and it's normalised. And secondly, you don't see it. You know, it's protected. If if you take a camera into a slaughterhouse, it's often illegal. You know, they don't want you to see this stuff. And there's a reason why. If you show this to a child... Um, parents would often be against that, but it is the truth. You know, a lot of people say it's cruel to show a video to a child. I think it's cruel to feed animal products to a child. So I guess it's different from a perspective. But after I finished doing a bit more research, and I, I looked into more documentaries, more articles, uh, forums, talking with people, uh, and I realised that really there's, there's no decent reason why people eat meat and dairy. Um, I thought at the very end of it, uh, and this was just my preliminary investigation on on meat and dairy i thought at the end of it someone should do something about this and then i came to the realization that i am someone and so i should do something about it now i wasn't planning to change the world all on my own i know that i'm not going to stop the whole industry but i didn't want to be part of that i consider myself to be an intelligent and compassionate person it doesn't mean that i need to you know go out and show love directly to everyone and you know go hippie tree lover and all of that it just means that i did not agree with that practice of of them killing animals when they're innocent you know bringing animals into existence only for a life of torture and then murder at the end of it that wasn't how i identified myself so i didn't want to live in conflict with my morals and my ethics so i decided um pretty much at the end of that day after researching about meat and dairy and veganism and vegetarianism i think i was mentally vegan uh, i understood why for the first time i understood why vegans went vegan uh, before i had pretty much no idea i just thought it was an extreme strict diet like a fad uh, i didn't really know much about it i think there's a lot of uh, demonization about vegans um, in the media and i didn't really have much idea i was just going along with what society told me to think so after i realized what veganism was um, i was mentally vegan but i think for a lot of people it takes it can take a long time, it can take weeks, months or even years for some people to make the transition between paying for animal cruelty and slowly not doing that. So um, I decided mentally that that was my goal, veganism. Uh, I thought a good first step, and remember I was a heavy meat eater and a, you know, a big consumer of lactose and dairy and all of that, I uh, decided that a good logical step would just go vegetarian for a few days. And one thing I've not mentioned is when I went vegetarian, I lived in Spain. I you know, currently live in Spain at the moment. So it wasn't straightforward to go vegetarian in Spain. I think um, out here you go to a lot of restaurants and you say you're vegan or vegetarian. They don't understand what it is most of the time. Um, you know, some people think tuna is vegetarian or vegan. You know, they just don't get it. It's not so advanced as other places in the world like Germany and England. Um, so going vegetarian in Spain is not common. Uh, it's a vastly growing movement, but it's not very common that you'll meet other people who are vegetarian or vegan. So um, nonetheless, I, it doesn't matter how hard it is. Uh, it was not. I didn't see it as my choice. I wanted to stop contributing to animal cruelty. Um, if it was almost impossible, I would still try to do it because I think it's the right thing to do. Um, so I went around restaurants uh, and tried to see anything on the menu that was vegetarian um, and just gather some food basically I was, I was coming into work for lunch and I needed to eat so I realized that the options around me weren't so great um, I even at one point went to a petrol station and got a bag of peanuts and you know my diet wasn't fantastic and that's not to say a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet is unhealthy it's just as the same with any diet it is possible to have any diet that is unhealthy you always need to make sure that you're eating well, that you're eating healthy foods and a well-balanced diet of healthy foods. So uh, back then it was ignorance. It was not vegetarianism that was unhealthy. 
uh, I didn't want to pay for animal cruelty. I didn't want to consume animal products. And I was vegetarian, so I was still consuming dairy. Um, but I didn't know what to do, basically. It was after a few days that I thought, no, this has got to stop. Um, I do want to become vegan, but I've got to sort my food out. So I started bringing in a lot more food from home. And there's loads that vegetarians and vegans can eat. Um, I'm vegan now. So, you know, I eat beans like... Um, chickpeas lentils i eat seeds like uh, flaxseed and chia seeds i eat pasta rice uh, vegetables fruits there's 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 loads of stuff basically you're already if you're not vegan already you're already eating a lot of vegan food without even probably thinking about it so i sorted out my diet and um you know it's i've had my vegan anniversary just a few days ago uh, that was on the 5th of september so you know that was one year vegan and um yeah so i've been eating a lot better so I've been vegan for a year, but after a couple of months being vegan, I noticed uh, a change. And I don't know when it happened precisely, but I noticed a change. So once I looked into the food, our vegan food, uh, generally it tends to be healthier. Um, there's less saturated fat. There's no cholesterol, LDH cholesterol, the uh, the um, bad cholesterol in your body that comes from animal products. Um, and yeah, I was... I was eating better naturally but I decided to take it up to the next level and my my goal was to have a plant-based you know whole foods plant-based diet which has become quite popular online at the moment so uh, I looked onto websites like nutritionfacts.org it's a brilliant website uh, check it out if you haven't already and um, really kind of getting my shit together when it came to diet so uh, I was eating much better than I was before and one thing I noticed a couple of months after was I used to have an illness called uh, ulcerative colitis. It's a form of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, I've got to be completely honest, actually. I said I used to have, I still have it because it's a chronic illness. It's permanent. Um, but now I have no symptoms at all. And I've not had symptoms uh, ever since a couple of months after going vegan. So that was the first time I've had it for about 10 years. Uh, I'm 29 now. I got it when I was 19. Um, when I got it, I lost a lot of weight and I found that any food I ate pretty much made me ill. And uh, it might be coincidental, but a couple of months after going vegan and more specifically whole foods, plant-based diet, uh, all the symptoms disappeared. And uh, whereas in the past I would get ill, I would bleed when I go to the toilet, I'd have pains, I'd have fatigue. Now I was feeling energetic, I was sleeping better, uh, I was feeling more positive because I knew that I wasn't contributing to a, a world of suffering for animals. And also um, I could start to push myself. I've always been able to push myself in the past, but the next day I'd suffer. You know, I'd be ill or, you know, I'd not be feeling good. Now, however, I can push myself a lot more. I can focus my muscles. I can do sit-ups, hundreds of sit-ups. And then the next day, I'm just feeling the typical ache from, you know, exercising. I'm not feeling pain or bleeding or anything like that. So I'm a lot healthier. And so I didn't go vegan for health, but being vegan certainly benefited my health. So it was great to see that. Um, and then, of course, uh, there is the environmental aspects of being vegan, which is huge. If, if you understand just what happens with the animal agriculture industry and how much it contributes to um, the climate crisis that we've got at the moment, um, it's scary. It's really scary. And I think Leonardo uh, DiCaprio has done a lot of work. One of his documentaries, Before the Flood, highlights just how much of an issue it is and la how largely unaware a lot of society is about how much of uh, this isn't just global warming it's not um climate change it's an environmental disaster it's a crisis we we need to do something now yesterday you know we can't debate about this anymore and um i was looking into the environmental aspects of it i've watched cowspiracy it's a great documentary i recommend you watch that too if you've not done so uh, but basically i realized that if you're not vegan there's probably a high chance that there's a lot of contradictions in your life uh, if you donate to animal charities if you recycle uh, if you promote a healthy lifestyle, um, you're probably in conflict with yourself if you've not investigated veganism. Because if you recycle but you still eat meat, um, you'd be surprised at the amount of resources that it costs to feed animals. Uh, a vegan diet is a lot more uh, resource efficient. Um, if you're interested in health, maybe you're a personal trainer, maybe you're just keen on keeping health and you go to the gym uh, chicken is often promoted as a health food so is fish when i research these foods on nutritionfacts.org and they've got scientific studies linked to every video there 
I learned so much about the amount of uh, mercury in fishes, uh, in in fish and in chicken, the amount of hormones and you know all the steroids that are fed into chickens. I just didn't want to be part of that. And I know a lot of people will say to me, um, "Yeah, but." you know, that's farmed and that's factory uh, animals. I have animals in my garden. Um, I think if you couple the health implications of eating animal products and animal proteins, and you couple that with the fact that you are killing an innocent animal, put those together, there's no justification for it. I think even if there was uh, a backyard chicken who the family looked after it very, very well and took the eggs. For me, I don't agree with stealing the eggs. Eventually, when the chicken stops laying eggs, it's it's basically treated like a product. And I see now something that I didn't see before, and that is that animals are here with us. They're not here for us. You know, they're not products. They are beings. And in the animal kingdom, humans are animals. We're part of the animal kingdom. We are equal. We we don't have any more right to life than any other innocent animal on this planet. So, um, for me, it was a massively awakening experience. Um, I might have seemed crazy to a lot of people, suddenly doing a 180 from being a big meat eater to vegan. But I think once you get it, once you see the information for yourself and once you research, it's just crazy. Most people that become aware of this information do make changes in their life. Um, and I don't blame people for not going vegan without knowing this information you know I was a big meat eater for 28 years 29 years and I I didn't I wasn't aware of any of this information yet I thought I was compassionate I would consider myself to be an intelligent person but I think if you come across veganism do your research you know it's it's entirely possible to be a healthy vegan um entirely possible it's it's maybe easier to be healthy as a a vegan looking after their diet than a meat eater looking after their diet. Um, some of the best athletes in the world are vegan. Um, we've got champion tennis players. We've got world record weightlifters who are vegan. We've got um, UFC fighters who are vegan. You know, there, there's a lot of people in uh, combat sports, in sports in general, who do very well on a vegan diet. So don't knock it before you've researched it um, it only makes you look silly uh, I, I would have knocked it before and I just didn't have the research and I didn't know what I was talking about so I researched it and then I decided to make the change so I'm feeling healthier you know I have no signs of my illness um, I can't cure my illness but I have no symptoms I've not had symptoms for uh, about 10 months now or more and um, I'm feeling very very good and I think now I wanted to create this channel just to show you guys that if I can go vegan in Spain where it's really not easy um, I didn't cook for myself before uh, I didn't do food shopping you know I, I was able to learn all that if I was able to go vegan here in Spain with those conditions I'm sure you guys can too um, it's a lot easier when you think of the victims involved. I know a lot of people are addicted to cheese because it has additives in the cheese. I know that people find it hard coming away from milk, but there's loads of milk alternatives available like soy, hemp, rice, oat, um, almond, my favourite. Um, there's loads of options of milk. There's alternatives for everything and it's just no longer necessary to paint this suffering of animals. It's as simple as that. So I hope you enjoy the videos that I upload. Thank you very much for listening to me and my story about why I've become vegan. Hopefully it's given you something to think about when it comes to the choices that you make every time you spend money. So for now, peace. Thank you very much for listening.